Hello, I'm Arthur. Welcome to my lab. I've been playing with uh, old CD and DVD driver drives. I've been taking them apart because I want to build a laser engraver using um, lasers from an old DVD player and and some other parts. Uh, just for fun, I'm actually working on a, a bigger uh, laser engraver with a stronger laser, but just because some people have done it and <laughs> I just want to play with that. So um, I, I decided to just take out, take apart some uh, old drives and put them to some use instead of just throwing them away. So anyway, I pulled out these uh, spindles that drive the, the DVD or CD. So these are motors from uh, three drives here and another one here. And actually, interesting thing that I noticed, uh, some of these motors just spin and that's it. But this guy here, if you listen carefully, it makes this noise. And it's not accidental. It's not that this motor is worn out. There's like a metal case here. And I think inside of it, there are bearings or, or something like that. So if you spin that, these bearings kind of move around and uh, some drives do make this this funky sound when you spin them up or, or slow them down and it's probably these bearings inside of them see how they were sp uh, spinning there moving around for a while and I think that uh, <clears throat> their purpose is to stabilize the spindle uh, so that even if it's not balanced perfectly uh, they just find their spot where where they need to sit and, and they cause the spindle to become balanced. That's just my theory. I, I don't really know, but that's what I'm thinking. So anyway, I have these three motors here and another one here that I hooked up um, to uh, my power supply. And actually, I've, I've noticed that uh, these motors have three windings in a star configuration, just like your Outrunner motors in in quads, in, in drones. Um, I don't have a motor here handy, I, I should have prepared one. But anyway, uh, most people know how these motors look like, the motors used in, in RC-controlled um, drones. So this motor has the same setup. So of course I could use um, an ESC that's used for motors like this. And this is just a, <coughs> excuse me, just a small uh, 10 amp uh, ESC Turnagy Hobby King, um, a cheap cheap uh, part. And I have this little controller here that allows me to set the poles uh, with, uh, because these um, ESCs are supposed to be controlled by a pulse that is uh, one millisecond at, at the minimum and two milliseconds maximum a positive pulse and then the frequency is uh, 50 Hertz so every 20 milliseconds um, this thing sends a pulse to the ESC and the uh, width of the pulse is adjusted by this dial um, and uh, so if I push this dial, whatever number is set here, uh, that's the width of pulse that will be sent to my ESC in, in percent. This is 28%. <clears throat> and I noticed that this motor starts at around 14%. So actually let me lay all this down to, let's say, 10. And I'll start it up and we'll see what happens. And this motor, again, is one of those that has um, these uh, balls ball bearings inside you can hear it although the sound is not as loud as in the other one so let's uh, let's spin it up at 10 it's not even moving at 13 it started moving but see how it wobbles hopefully you can see it on, on camera I'm trying to hold this motor loosely now <clears throat> and it should be clear that it wobbles now even, even worse. So, this motor is not balanced right now. And you can, and now, it just by itself 
it just became smooth it doesn't wobble around anymore and I'm thinking that's the the balls inside of the motor that cause it to just auto balance you know I'm going to reduce the width of pulse and stop the motor and you'll see that it will start shaking see as it stops it started shaking and uh, the balls inside of the motor are making noise and now it stopped at 12 so I'm actually going to stop it and then start it at like 25 percent right off the bat and you'll hear those uh, balls making uh, rattling sound first and then the motor will just stabilize and now it's quiet so just something interesting I think about how this motor works and so I was curious uh, what speeds am I getting using this motor so I uh, these these motors have triple hall sensors hall sensors detect changes in magnetic field and uh, they pick that up and send out pulses and so there are three hall sensors there are connections here um, for each one of them and they have two pins for power supply incoming power supply and also two output pins and so you apply voltage to the power supply and it apparently it doesn't matter uh, the polarity doesn't matter you can uh, put plus on one pin or plus on the other and minus on, on the other uh, pin and doesn't matter which way around you hook them up. I tried both ways and, and they worked. And then on the output pins you hook up your uh, amplifier to uh, improve amplitude because the amplitude that I'm getting here is about uh, 500 millivolt so half a volt only so you need to amplify this to be able to drive some kind of electronic circuit, uh, digital circuit um, to make use of these pulses and synchronize the spinning of the motor with uh, whatever you, you're building. So I was thinking about uh, building a persistence of vision display with this motor where you need to know where your, your uh, light source is at any given point in time to then uh, display patterns. So um, let's take a look at what's happening on the oscilloscope as this motor spins. I'm going to turn it off and get my uh, oscilloscope set up. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm going to turn on my motor and we'll see what happens. And actually, as I turn uh, the spindle, you can see the waveform move so that's that's my hall sensor picking up the movement and that's how i can tell uh, how many pulses per revolution i have because if we start counting i made a mark here on the spindle and i'm going to make a full resolution revolution and we'll see how many pulses we'll get so that's one two and three so if we uh, <clears throat> take the frequency and divided by three that will be number of revolutions per second then multiply it by 60 and we'll end up with rpm so let's take a look at what happens at 25 uh, percent pulse width see we get a nice waveform unfortunately it's a little bit noisy and so I can't really stabilize it to trigger um, and lock lock in on the trigger but anyway we can just uh, grab a single shot and see what the frequency is so the frequency is about 268 Hertz I'm 
gonna pull up calculator. I'm not gonna do the math in, in my head. So 268 hertz divided by three and multiplied by 60 is 5,360 RPM, looks like. So let's um, let's bring it up to 100 percent. All right, and you can see that the waveform has changed. We have a much higher frequency now. Let's grab just one shot and measure that. And we get about 925.9 Hertz. So at 100% or 99% uh, waveform or pulse width, I'm getting the frequency of 925.9 Hertz from my Hall sensor. That divided by 3 and multiplied by 60 gives me 18,500 RPM. So that's the maximum speed that I can get with uh, this ESC. That's pretty neat. That's pretty fast. And yeah, I can, I can hear this motor buzzing and it's moving pretty fast, but yeah, it's not a very powerful motor. I can stop it with my finger. See, it stopped and actually it's not even spinning up now. It went out of sync. Now it picked up. So you could use this motor for some fun project like Persistence of Vision. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe a small fan. Um, to drive a, a fan blade, you would really need some power, but maybe just for a small small fan, you could get away with this. Um, probably just uh, a lot of uses if you if you uh, try being creative about it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how you can drive a motor like this. Just get yourself a little ESC for um, Outrunner hobby motors some source of sort uh, some source of pulses to drive the ESC and you're good to go and again this motor now running at full speed and when I turn it off it's going to rattle as it slows down so I've replaced my fine Chinese power supply uh, lab power supply with a LiPo battery that outputs 12 volt and now I'm getting a much cleaner signal of course. Alright, see you guys later.